there, my friends. Uh, today's story on Indian Story Read Along is going to be from the Panchatantra Tales. Panchatantra Tales are a collection of stories that are supposed to be for children, but I mean, like, they had different standards back then, and some of them are kind of violent and weird and scary. But it was uh, to teach children lessons about really being safe and not getting in into, into any kind of danger. So they were kind of practicing tough love back then. Uh, so one of these stories is called the Brahmana and the Goat. Every one of the Panchatantra stories has a moral. It has some kind of lesson. So it's not just a story. There's something they're trying to teach you through the story. So let's get started. The Brahmin and the Goat. Brahmins back in the olden days, um, before there was electricity and when kings and queens were still ruling, um, they followed much more strictly than today this idea of the caste system and it wasn't Racist the way that it is today quite honestly. It wasn't awful the way that it is today Back then it's that everybody had a job and this is how they divided up the labor in society Who does what work and that's really what it was supposed to be and uh, it didn't turn out to be that way. So Brahmins back in those days, they were the priests. They learned how to read and write. Most other people didn't. They ran the temples, they did all the ritual sacrifices, and they were the most highly respected in the entire society. So one thing they did was they sacrificed animals as part of their rituals and part of their worship. So that is what a Brahmana is, and this guy happens to have a goat with him. So let's see what he does. One day, a Brahmin called Mitra Sharma was returning home from a neighboring village. So he's thinking to himself, carrying this goat on his shoulders. It was kind of that villager to give me this plump goat for the sacrifice. Just then, three hungry crooks happened to see him. And they're thinking, they're whispering, what a plump goat. It would make a fine dinner. Let's trick him out of it. Now, these guys, I would have to say, are really, really smart because these guys, there's three against one. They could just beat him up, take the goat, and he'd just be lying there. But they actually want to, it's not good what they're doing, but they want to do it without violence. So uh, let's see how they do that. So then they have a plan. One says, it shouldn't be difficult. Listen, I'll tell you what we'll do. The first crook walked up to the Brahmin. He says, oh, Brahmin, how can you defile yourself by carrying a dog on your shoulders? And uh, dogs were very dirty animals, they thought back then. So Brahmanas especially should not be touching them because they were all supposed to be super, 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 super clean, carrying a dog on your shoulders. And then the Brahmana, first he flips out and he's like, you fool, don't you know a goat from a dog? And then this guy sticks to his guns. He is going to convince him it's a dog. He says, now, now, keep your temper. You are welcome to carry the dog if you wish. Look at the look on his face. He's kind of like, what? That's, that's weird. So then he's thinking, are my eyes playing tricks on me? That other guy goes away, the first guy. And he says, are my eyes playing tricks on me? And he looks over at the goat. And he goes, no, no, to be sure it's a goat. The Brahmin walked on a little farther when the second crook stopped him. And he says, why, holy sir, this dead calf may have been dear to you, but must you carry it on your shoulders? Have you forgotten that you are a Brahmana? That is a very, very wrong thing to do to carry dead animals or to even touch dead animals for, for Brahmins. And so he's saying he doesn't recognize that it's a goat either. The first guy said it's a dog. This guy says it's a dead calf. That's weird. And then this Brahmana gets angry and he says, are you blind? Can't you see that this is a live goat and not a dead calf? And then the guy says, well, please don't be angry, holy sir. I, I'm sorry, my, my mistake, perhaps. And then he is getting a kind of frustrated and he's walking along saying, what's the matter? Am I mad or are they? So this, there's a word for what they're doing to him. They're making him believe that he cannot trust his own eyes. That's called gaslighting. So he's, he can't trust his own memory. He can't trust his own eyes. And so they're trying to make him think that he's just gone mad, like he's going crazy and he doesn't actually know what he is carrying on his shoulders. And so that's gonna benefit them in the end. So hardly had he walked a few yards ahead when 
the third guy comes up and he says, Oh, Brahmana, drop the donkey before anyone sees you. People will talk. And now the Brahmana really thinks he's the one who's crazy. And he's like, no, three of them cannot be wrong. Maybe one guy's nuts, maybe the other guy is nuts, but not three of them, not three total strangers. He never thought for a second maybe they're trying to trick him. So the Brahman did not utter a word. He pulled the goat off his shoulders, flung it to the ground, and ran away as fast as he could. And now he is just kind of not trusting his own brain. Now he's saying, that was no goat. It was a goblin that kept changing its shape. How could the villager, the villager who gave him the goat, play such a mean trick on me? And meanwhile, these guys are just laughing. They didn't even have to fire a single shot or hurt him at all. And uh, they got what they wanted. As soon as he was out of sight, come on friends, that was neatly done. Now you there, collect sticks and light a fire. We too shall kill and skin the goat. The moral of the story down there is trust yourself before you trust others. So I think this is this is kind of a difficult thing because when you have a bunch of strangers coming up to you and saying something, your first thought is not going to be that everyone else is wrong and you're right. You're going to be like, well, I don't know any of them and they're all saying the same thing. So what if they're right? But uh, I think that he probably, if I was him, I probably would have gone all the way home and asked my friends and families, yo, is this a goat? <laughs> I, would have, I would have just been like asking people I trust instead of these strangers because like these guys were all in on this together. Anyway, this story was from the Panchatantra's Tales and this is a very old book. I think this is probably my big first book. My, my first big book I bought or my parents bought for me in like 1988 or something like that. Um, and this is from Amachitrakata. They don't, they don't actually make this anymore. Um, so that's why I'm reading these stories to you. I hope you join us again. We're going to be reading more Panchatantra stories and more of all other kinds of stories on Indian Story Read Along. We'll see you next time.